I don't know. You guys need to get ready. Look, um, I know it's just a simple wedding here at the house, but I want my maid of honor by my side. You really mean that? It's not like she's got a million people busting down her door for the job. <laughs> don't listen to him. Even if I did, I wouldn't want anyone else. Cole, it's me again. I thought that you would be off the phone by now. Can you please call me as soon as you get this? It's important. Hey, yeah, um, I, I was on hold. I, I would like to talk to a patient, um, Hannah O'Connor. Oh, I'm afraid that's impossible. Miss O'Connor doesn't have telephone privileges. All right, look, I, I know you have rules, but um, can't you just spend them this one time? I, I'm, I'm, I'm a friend. Rules are rules. But Hannah can't talk to you anyway. She's with her attorney right now. Writing that letter is the last mistake you'll ever make. What are you doing? Tying up a loose end. Well, now that you got it all figured out, you can go home. No. Not a chance. I'm going to be here when Glenn calls. Is that Glenn? <gasps> That's a 617 area code. That's Boston. Okay. This is when we're going to find out if Elijah Clark is Bennett Thompson. May I? Go ahead. Do it. Thank you. So, Glenn, you recognize the guy in the photo? Is this John McBain? Is this Glenn? No, I'm sorry. Glenn can't come to the phone. Who is this? Lock the doors! Yeah. Okay, okay, you don't have to do this. No, no, no. You don't have to do this. saying that if anything happened to you, it was all my fault. Yeah, but nobody saw it. What's to prevent you from writing another one? I won't, I won't. Or from won't. stealing another phone and calling Cole or Ford again. Honestly, Hannah, Ford. Neither of them want anything to do with me. You don't have to worry about it. See, the thing is, I just don't think I can trust you to keep your big mouth shut anymore. You can. You can trust me. We're supposed to be partners, Hannah. And an essential part of a partnership is trust. It's obviously time to end ours. No, please. What happened if that letter got now? Or if Cole or Ford had listened to you? Can you imagine what my life would be like if John McBain had the slightest idea of what I've been up to? This isn't Glenn. Who am I speaking with? My name is Perry. I worked with Glenn at the Hall of Records here in Boston. Yeah, where is he? He's gone. Gone, gone where? The EMTs took him. He's dead. Can you tell me what happened? Glenn just collapsed. He was dead before the EMTs even got him into the ambulance. He had this fax in his hand. It had your name on it. I thought I should call you and let you know. Yeah, what hospital did they take him to? Okay. Name of the officers at the scene? Just think. Okay. Thank you. What happened? Well, Glenn won't be IDing any photos anytime soon. He's dead. Dead? How? Let me guess. Heart attack. Well, now we don't need an ID. We know exactly how Glenn died. Bennett Thompson, a.k.a. Elijah Clark, killed him. Hey, you guys, come on, let's go, let's go. JP's almost here, you're not even dressed. It's because I don't have anything to wear. Oh, my God. I don't have anything to wear. Oh, my God. Todd brought everything over from the palace. Oh, we'll Hannah find God. something yeah, to do. You're made of honor. Over a bunch of dresses and crap, and I didn't pick any of them out, so oh, don't worry about it. thank God. Let's go. No, it wouldn't matter anyway. You guys would look good in wooden barrels. <laughs> huh? Let's go. Got a wedding to throw. Wedding to throw here. At least uh, have Hannah call me back? I'm sorry, that's just not possible. Can you uh, at least tell me how, how she's doing? I mean, is she okay? I've had occasion to speak to Hannah a few times. She's troubled, but she has a good heart. Yeah, you think so? Personally, I find it very difficult to reconcile the things that she's confessed to doing with a young woman I've gotten to know. Would you like to leave her a message? No. Thanks. I mean, honestly, Hannah, what choice have you given me? Look, I, I told you, okay? Writing that letter was a mistake. Yeah, and the phone call. It was stupid. I, 
I should have known better, but I learned my lesson and I promise I'm gonna stick to our agreement. Oh, it's fine. With deals like this, three strikes and you're out. What are you gonna do? Shoot me? The whole place will come running. How are you gonna explain that? Now, where was that level-headed practicality when you wrote that letter? Oh, of course I'm not gonna kill you. You're gonna kill yourself. I got to Glenn. This guy is on a killing spree. No, that might be a tad dramatic. Come on, John. Glenn dies suddenly of a heart attack before he can confirm Bennett Thompson is Eli. Rodney might have been able to ID Eli if he hadn't also suddenly died of a heart attack, just like my mother could have if she didn't. Yes, if she hadn't suddenly died of a heart attack, I know. I don't think it's a coincidence either. Okay, then let's go pick up Eli. What are we waiting for? Evidence of wrongdoing is what we're waiting for. There are three dead bodies, John! With no connection to the suspect. Hey. We don't know, you know? Eli could be working for this guy, Bennett Thompson, all right? We don't know who he is. We have no M.O. We have no motive for the crimes. We have nothing. We will find something. What are we waiting for? We can go do it. We can start. Where do we start? We don't. I'm gonna... I'm gonna find out if Eli even had the opportunity to do this. I'm gonna have to add in a... Hello? Blair, it's John. Hey, John, what's up? I need to talk to you about Eli. Oh, God, don't tell me that you think he's a psycho killer, too. You want me to kill myself? Are you insane? I think you're the insane one. I saw your file, you know. I know you tried to kill yourself a few months ago when Ford blew you off. That was a mistake I'll never make again. And I'm certainly not about to shoot myself. No, no, no. Of course, you're not going to shoot yourself. How do we ever explain the gun? However, you od No one would ever be surprised. Ooh, why don't you try on this one? I think we need a repeat of your prom fashion show. Mom, I don't think we have time. Todd's waiting. Todd can wait. He'll be glad he did when he sees how gorgeous you are. No, 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 it's fine. Besides, you need to get ready. Go, 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 don't go. worry about me. This won't be my first quickie wedding to Todd. What does that mean? Let's just say that the first time we got married, it was, it was in a bit of a hurry. Sounds like you've got a story. Yeah, I've got lots of stories. I should share them with you. Someday? Now. Okay, but mom, we really have to get ready. Sweetheart, I'm the bride. They can't have a wedding without me. Besides, I think it's, I think it's time you learn something about my history with your father. So that I can understand you guys better? Yeah. And so you don't make the same mistakes we made. Okay, once upon a time. <laughs> Todd and I met. Um, shortly thereafter, he hired me to be his lawyer. Shortly after that, Blair and he were getting a divorce. Blair had been in an accident, and Todd wanted custody of Star. How old was she then? Oh, she was she was a tiny little thing back then. Anyway, um, Todd's chances were very slim of getting custody of Star. So I told him that in order to significantly improve his chances, um, he should prove to the court that he could provide a safe and stable home for Star which included not just a father in that home, but, but a mother as well. Okay, so you married Todd so that he could have custody of Star? How long had you two been dating? Oh, we, we, we hadn't been dating. In fact, we kind of hated each other. It was, uh, it was a marriage of convenience. But I don't get it. How is it convenient for you? He gave me $5 million. You married Todd for money? Yeah. But uh, he married me for his daughter. Sorry, I got your messages. What's going on? Just hold me. Just hold me. Okay. 